Good morning and welcome to our fourth session of Get on the Bus Reader's Advisory. Today we are going to be talking about Reader's Advisory Tools in Go Wild. My name again is Sarah here at the State Library and I've got Chris right next to me who will be giving today's presentation. Just a few introductory pieces and then I'll hand it off to Chris. All of the program sessions will be archived at getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com and I'll just show you that main page right now. The first page just has some of the same information I've been covering at the beginning of each webinar. And then the first four sessions are archived, or well today's of course will be archived later, on the right hand side. We have Cass's presentation, uh, my presentation from last week, the, this past Tuesday's presentation from Tamara in Albany County, the Indirect Readers Advisory, and then Chris's presentation will be archived later today. The, this list will grow uh, starting next week when we begin our genre conversations and we'll, you'll start to see those titles be added as the presentations occur throughout the next few weeks in May. I'll just go ahead and click on our last presentation just as an example. The link to the video archive is at the top of the page, a little introduction on the presenter or rather the, um, the program, any links that may have been uh, mentioned in the program, and then we have a few homework assignments. For those of you out there who are taking advantage of the one and a half uh, CEUs for, um, uh, for professional development credits, uh, I do need to see those of you participating in the conversation by entering your homework questions. And for any of you out there, even if you're not eligible for those CEUs, to be eligible for prizes that we're giving away here at the State Library, you do need to participate um, on each program's page. If there's any questions about that, please feel free to email me, and my email is on several areas of this website. Uh, Chris will field uh, qu questions and answers and comments at the end of the presentation. There is a little hand icon if you need to raise your hand, though she will be, you can do that at any time during the presentation, though uh, she'll be looking at those at the end. And you may also type a question into the chat box. If you don't see a chat box on the right hand side of your screen, you will see three little icons, the top being a red rectangle with an arrow. Click that and that will maximize your chat box where you can type in a question. I think that's all I have for the moment. So with that said, I will go ahead and hand it off to Chris. This will be where her presentation will be archived and she's gonna go ahead and get started right now. So for this segment of the Get on the Bus for Reader's Advisory, we're gonna look at tools in Go Wild. Uh, we'll look at books and authors, novelists, take a quick peek at Lista and Academic One file so that you get some more background and places to look for genre training and refresher, bibliographies, using appeal factors, doing book talks, information for book groups, and finding some background information uh, in the form of articles. I'm starting here on the Go Wild Databases page where we will access these resources alphabetically here by title. You'll see that we also have a Browse All Resources kind of by topical and you can get to these during, under the Arts, Humanities, and Literature. We will be splitting out literature, so look for that here in the Browse All Resources. One thing I wanted to remind everyone about, uh, that these are accessible in all the libraries, public libraries, and the schools. If you want to show these to uh, patrons, up in the very top right corner, there's a remote user login. If you click on that, they just enter their library card number and their PIN. Many times that PIN will be WILD, and you can just remember that it's up here at the very top, W-Y-L-D. I'm going to go back to our databases page, and let's get started. We're going to begin today with a database called Books and Authors. I'm going to scroll down here. You'll see here's Books and Authors, a little bit of information. It also has uh, an information if you have problems connecting. There is an alternate link. So if for some reason you don't go straight in, try that other link there. 
like that. Okay, so now we're in our books and authors, and we're going to take a quick tour first. At the very top, you'll see that we just have a title, and right above that, there's a help screen. It's always good to familiarize yourself to where the help button is. Here you have information on how to search, different types of searching, the read-alike wizard, who, what, and where, what their expert picks are, and things like that. So take a look at your help screen. If you're curious about who the folks are giving information about these books, you can also look at Meet the Editors. Right under the title, you'll see that we can browse titles within this resource. You just click on a letter and move through these items. There's also a browse authors. So for example, if we wanted to look up Max Brand, I'm going to click on the B. But you'll see that this is a very long list and we haven't even left the A's. So instead of using the next button, on the left hand side you can see that you can put a starts with or contains. So if I had a really long name or I was unsure about the spelling, I can use that starts with and search and get to that point in the browse authors list. And now I can select Max Brand. So here's Max Brand and you'll see that we can look at his writings, career, and other information. So another way to get familiar with authors, titles, is just to use these browse lists. Moving across here, we're going to skip who, what, when, where and do that in a minute, but the next one over is expert picks. These are selected. You'll see that you have your editors list and librarians favorites. So we can scroll down, for example, under expert picks and there's uh, worthy Young Adult Books, ALA Best Lists, Best Genre Fiction, Historical Fiction, Holocaust Literature, New York Times, Publishers Weekly, things like that. So you can come in and take a look at these. Here's Oprah Book Club selections as well. You'll note that we also have that linked off of the Wildcat. But let's take a look at one of these. This is 100 Books That Shaped the Century. And here you'll just get a nice list. So if you're looking for something new, something different, titles from the century, uh, ways to do uh, discussions or displays, this is another great place to come and take a look at those expert picks. The next one over is award winners. Again, we also have award winners listed on Wildcat, but you can scroll through these. There's the Agatha Award, American Book Awards, etc. So you can always use those to just familiarize yourself with some other information. I'm going to click on Books and Authors and let's just come back to our main page. Under all of those tabs, there's a feature called Know What You're Going to Read Next. And this is their highlights on tagging it to some seasonal types of selections. So I'm going to click on Monthly Highlights here. And you'll see that they listed some books around Easter, summer movie season. And since today is Take Our Sons and Daughters to Work Day, They've also given you some book titles for that. National Library Week, all sorts of things that they've already pulled together, which is also very nice if you're looking for some other ideas for titles and displays. That feature, Know What You're Going to Read Next, also shows up here under Seasonal Suggestions. Let's go back up here to the top and look at, so in addition to looking at browsing titles using genre and appeal factors, we can use the who, what, when, where. On this screen, you'll see that you can type in or choose a character, subject, a location, and or, and or a time period. So if I click to type, <clears throat> I can just put my information here and enter it. If I click on choose, it will now give me a drop down menu. If I click on that, you're going to see everything from 17 year olds to bankers, to farm wives, grandfathers, kidnap victims, and you have an incredible list here. But I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to select Game Warden. Notice now on the right, it started to do my little Venn diagram circles. Now I'm going to choose a subject, and that gives me a drop down menu, or I can come down, choose a location, and again, notice I get my drop down menu. So let's do that. We've got everything here from Abbotsville to countries to lake areas to mountains. And I'm going to scroll all the way down here and get to 
well, I overshot, to Wyoming. I could also type that in. So I could go back out and just type my Wyoming in and hit enter, especially since it's so hard to land on this. There we go. Now you'll notice that my little circles have changed over here on the right, and I can come up where they intersect, and I see that I have one title. If I click on that, my overlapping results was this title, Blood Trail, and it talks about Wyoming and murder and Joe Pickett, of course, being a game warden. I'm going to go back out to our main page. So that was our who, what, when, where. You can use that, again, uh, if you were looking at a location, a character, a type of person, a time period, you can use all of those to find different books. If you go to those books, and then it will lead you to other resources, and we'll look at that as we do some searches. So in addition to using these tabs here across the top, up at the top right, we have a search box. And it's defaulting to a title search. I do have a drop-down menu if I want to use author, keyword, or series. But I'm going to put in search for happiness and launch this search. Notice that it's Hector and the search for happiness. It did not have to be the beginning of my title to find my title. I can click on this book now and come in and get a description, but you'll also notice that it gives me characters, genres, settings, subjects, and the time period. All those things that I can search in the who, what, when, where category. It also lists recommended uh, similar titles here at the bottom. But there are blue tabs right under the title of the book about the book, about the author, book reviews, and a tab called read -alikes. If I click on that, it will bring up a couple of selections based on that book. At the top, under our search box, there's also a link to advanced search. If I click on advanced search, I can combine author and title or genre. Genre has a drop-down box. Or I can come down here and use character name. And that's what I'm going to do. So if you have a favorite character or you're working with a patron who has just a wonderful character that they're trying to find other books or more books like it. So I type in my character name and launch my search. Here's all the books that that character appears in. So I can select one of those books. I get a description about it. Again, I get all my genre and subject and setting information and they recommend similar titles here as well as a link back to the series where that character appears. At the top here you'll see that we can uh, print this, uh, these items, we can email. There's also a little checkbox. If I click on that it's going to give me a message telling me to save that using that little checkbox I need to log in. So I'm just going to cancel that and come up here where it says log in. When I do that, I'll be able to take advantage here of what they're calling on the right my reading room, where I can add marked lists, books, authors, and then go into my reading room right from here. But first, I have to log in. All you need to do is to create a new account, is create a username and password, just like we'll see in another database that we'll look at. So all you have to do is be able to remember your little password. And now up here at the top it says welcome back and now I can go in and add items to this list. I can also just go in and look at my reading room. So what I've got here are lists of items. I have books and authors and I also have folders. Notice that I have a list of books I haven't done anything with but I've also created little book list folders one for mystery, one for health and wellness. If I wanted to create a new one, I just click submit and name that list. So for example, I want to do one on food and travel. It does make you do a description. So now you'll see that I have a folder for food and travel. So I can do a couple of books here and I can add those to my, to my food and travel folder and submit those in. So now when I go look at my different folders, I can open those up and those will all be in there. Notice that I also have put some authors in here so I can keep track of all of my lists, my folders, my books, 
And when I click on my books, there's my little folders so I can access those and my author list. So let's go back out. Uh, now that we know that we can save these, keep track of our books and our reading, let's take a look at some of the other tools here. I'm going to scroll down. The next thing we're going to look at is the Read Alike Wizard. This lets us put in a book that someone likes and try to find some new books about that or like that. So I'm going to put in Eat, Pray, Love. And I didn't have to do the commas or anything. It brings up my book. And now because we're in their read-alike wizard, it will bring up these boxes that I can now check. So when you're doing your reader's advisory interview, what was it they liked about this book? Perhaps it was the travel and the spirituality. And now I can find more books that cover that same sort of genre, same sort of subject, things that they liked about that book. I'm going to do one more book that way um, in the go to in the read alike wizard so that we can compare it when we go into novelist. I'm going to type in the title Backwater. When I click on the title this time, you'll see that no books were found containing that same set. This just lets us know that often we need to use more than one of the tools that we have available to us. So that's why I'm showing books and authors and novelists today. The last thing we're going to look at here uh, is under Genre. There's a tab here for Browse Genres that I can click on. Or notice that it's the same box here on the left-hand side. So we can look at fantasy fiction, horror stories, popular romances, western fiction. I'm going to select Mystery Fiction, but notice right under Mystery Fiction it says About This Genre. Each one of them have an article about the genre itself, and if they have articles and essays, for uh, books that fall into that genre category. And from there I can just click on Mystery Fiction. Now what it does on the left of that box, or on the right of that box, we have our genres here and now we have our subgenres. This will be the same alphabetic list no matter what we've clicked on. So it means you're going to end up scrolling through. Notice that we have Cozy Mystery, so I could select that. Or I can come down here to where it says Next and work through the alphabetic list. And again, you'll see this for every genre topic that you come into. So we've got Mystical, Nature and Revolt, Robot Fiction. And now I'm going to come into this one because I want to select Private Detective. So I've selected Mystery Fiction and now Private Detective. And it will give me another set of books under this genre. I can come and browse through these. Notice I have multiple pages. I have 109 pages, not items. So I can browse through those by clicking on a title. So I clicked on Six Kill by Robert B. Parker. What it will give me is information specifically to that book, but notice it also gives me a series record. So I can click on the series record, come in here, there's recommended titles, but if I keep scrolling, there are the books in the series for the Spencer books. I'm going to come back out and we'll take a look at uh, another genre here. Let's just go wander into another one just to take a look at, for example, popular romances. Again, we can look at about the genre. There's there a little bit of information about it and the essays about specific books. And again, on the left there, I just click on Popular Romances, and again, it gives me my book jackets, and I can wander through. I can use these sub-genres here, or I can wander through and browse all the book titles, but it's these tiny, tiny little arrows here at the bottom and the top. So I can just click on Next Page, and it'll walk me through each one of those. I have to say, when I was preparing for this, I was in the mystery private detective genre, and I came across a book that I didn't know was out, and I walked immediately out into the main area of the library and got on my Kindle and ordered and bought that one. So it worked quite well as a reader's advisory tool for myself. So now I'm going to go back to the Go Wild Databases page again, and let's take a look now at Novelist. Many of you have used Novelist before to try to find books for yourself. On the list here, you'll notice that I can click on the title, on the far right is a help with novelist. 
and there's a search box. You can launch a search right here from the databases page. But for this instance, we're going to click on the title and go on in. Novelist is a wonderful reader's advisory tool when you're working with patrons and a great training tool when learning more about reader's advisory and genres, getting information for book talks, book discussions, and working with students. It's a great database uh, to take a book and find additional books to read. So for example, when Cass mentioned in What Appeals to Your Patrons, she was talking about Twilight and trying to find books not based on the vampire, but maybe using the strong character development. So we can type in Twilight and notice that it brings up the series so we could just type in, click on Saga and launch this search. When we come in here, now it's going to give me, there's Twilight, notice it gives me some information. It gives me series information. I can look at Alexa reading score, so if you're working with students, I can go into the title, I can launch a search about the author, and also notice I can check Wildcat. If I click on Check Wildcat, it will open up the Wildcat catalog and you can see if that book is owned in a library near you. But let's just click on the title and go in to Twilight. Here's some information about the book. Again, there's the series if you wanted more about that. But notice that it also gives me a definition of appeal terms. It gives me the genre, storyline, tone, all of those appeal terms that they use here in Novelist. But if you wanted to see more, click on the definition of appeal terms and it will bring that up. Appeal terms for adults, appeal terms for teens, and you can look at those. Back at our record, let's scroll down. There's information about the book, but you'll see that on the right hand side we can search for more. Here we can use the genres, we can use our appeal factor, storyline, tone. We can also use subjects about the book. So here's where, as Cass was talking about, rather than trying to find books about vampires, which you'll see we can also do, we can use that character-driven, first-person narratives, for example, and teenagers. And then we just scroll down and launch a new search, and it will bring up another list of books, of course, including the one we started from, because that would be uh, also fit those terms. And then you can guide your patron to a new set of books. I'm going to go back out on the home page and let's look at one more before we tour around and look at some other things in this database. We looked at Backwater when we were looking for more books in Books and Authors. And I'm going to click on Title here and launch a search. And remember in Books and Authors we didn't come up with any way to find more books. Seem to be slowed down here. So in this one, we're going to get our Find More box. Let me go back out here. I think we're having trouble loading up here. Let's just get this cleaned up here. Yeah, we're a little locked up. So give me one second here. We may have to jump to one of our resources, other resources and come back to this one. So let's, let's see if we can get Novelist to load up here. And let's move on to a couple other things, just see if we're having any luck, and we'll come back to Novelist. So before we go back into Novelist, let's look at a couple things that you might not think about. One of them is the Library Information Science and Technology Abstracts. Notice again that we have a search box out here on the main page or we can just go into that resource and we'll see if that one's available to us today. Let's try a Gale database. Let's look at Academic One File. Academic One File will also let us take a look at some of these resources. This is a nice one because in addition to Lista, if we can get into that one, or in Academic One File, Here's where we can locate some articles, some background information uh, on Reader's Advisory. So let's do a search on Reader's Advisory and Genre and launch that search and see that here's where we can get some more information. Notice it defaults to the Academic Journal tab and I just have a few here, but I'm going to click on Magazines and notice that we have Reader's Advisory, 
um, the book list online, of course. And there's one here called Keeping Up With Genres. We can go into that one. And so here's Keeping Up With Genre Information in the full text. So this is a great resource to come into and take a look at some other sources, getting some background information. I'm going to go back here and see if we're having any luck. So here we are, back back at Novelist. Let's try that again. So let's go back and try our title, Backwater. And again, we're comparing this to what we saw in Books and Authors. I'm going to select my title. Gives me my appeal terms again. So I have my genre, storyline, tone. It also gives me a grade level and the lexile. And I have information about this book. On the right hand side is the search for more and you'll see that we can use those appeal factors, the genre, storyline, and tone. So as whereas we didn't find something in books and authors, trying a different resource, we can now use that book. It's an excellent uh, young adult book and we can now find them some other books to look at. So let's look at, again, we're going to use that character driven and we're going to use engaging and we're going to look at family relationships. As you're conducting that reader's advisory interview, those are the kinds of things that people are going to talk about what they loved in that book. And now we can launch a search. And here you'll see that we do have some other books that we can show. In addition to searching for a book title, I can also search for an author. So everybody's been reading the Stieg Larson books. And I'm going to indicate that this is an author search here and launch my search. So now we have information about this author. Again, I get my appeal terms, the writing style, and the list of books in the series. This is really useful because, of course, everybody wants to know in what order to read the books, and it lists the series here. But very important, since there won't be any more Stieg Larsson books, you'll want to use the Find More on the right-hand side again. So we can do, again, mystery, and we can do intricate. I mean, that's what really people are looking for, that intricate plot that he did, very gritty and very suspenseful. So that lets us get at what folks were loving about these books and now lead them to something else that they can try. So of course we get Stig Larson, but then we get other books. And they've written these articles for you, brought these lists together to help folks do just this guide patrons when they're trying to find a different sort of book. The other thing you can use is on the left hand side here, notice that even from these lists I can now narrow again using those appeal factors. So I can look at different genres and then I can look at, a diff at various appeal factors and narrow my list again using those. Novelist is also a helpful tool when you're preparing for summer reading. I can do a search up here for summer reading. And what you'll get first is a list of books. But there's also a tab up here called lists and articles. If I click on that, you'll see that they've brought lists together for summer reading. And you'll also notice that they're working on the 2011 theme. So I can look at these two articles, for example, when putting together the summer reading for this year's um, One World program. And here's a list of books. You can also access these lists under the Novelist Feature Articles here on the right-hand side under Novelist Resources. So you can search it or take a look under Novelist Feature Articles. In there, when you go to Novelist Feature Articles, You'll see that we can select a reading level and we can also look at an alphabetical list. Like we've seen before, we have long alphabetic lists here and a little tiny next button. But you can also click on a letter or, for example, just click on C and scroll down or browse for. And you'll want to use this browse field here which will get you in to see if they have anything. But it's more fun to browse these. So for example, I'm going to click on Chick's Roll, and it talks about women in fiction. And what you get when you go into these articles is they list various authors and books. 
So another way to let you see how else to guide folks to books. So we can look at a particular author here. We can look at a particular theme here. I can click on a book, What's a Girl Gotta Do, for example. And now it's brought a specific book up. If I also scroll down here, again, it will lead me back to those lists and articles. So you always get reviews about the book, information about the book, which is really nice if you're trying to order something. It will also give you the ISBNs. I'm going to go back up here on, to my book and remind you that you can also check Wildcat. Okay, let's go back to our main page here and look at another way to get into the books, and that's here on the left called Recommended Read List. So in addition to using appeal factors, typing a book in to find more books like that, we can also come into some recommended reading lists. Notice that I can do adult, teen, ages 9 to 12, or 0 to 8. So if I click on teen, it opens up my list here which is really nice because this also helps us get to maybe some genres that we're not familiar with. For example, the graphic novels and manga. Once I click on that, you'll see that it gives me other subcategories here that I can move through, and I think that's really helpful when it's not your area. So we could click on superheroes for younger teens, and again, it gives me some books I can look at. I can also do that for adults, and again, I'll see different genres here that I can follow. So if you're not that familiar with science fiction, for example, I can click on that. I can click on historical fiction, and notice it's giving me all of these subcategories. I'm going to select one here called Dear Diary. A lot of folks like reading that diary kind of approach or the letters in books. If I scroll down here, here's my list of books, and in honor of the royal wedding, I'm going to select Gone with the Windsors. So just from going from the genre list into the subgenre, I can get to specific books here. I'm going to go back out here to my list of Dear Diary and scroll down a little bit. You can see that we have a lot of books here. We can also print, email, or save this particular list of books that we've gotten. There's also at the top here a print this view, or you can view a grid, title only, brief title, giving patrons a list to go with once you've gotten to this subgenre. If I select a book here, again, let's try uh, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society book. We have our Czech Wildcat. We can use this just like we did before, we can give that list of books, we can come into the book, and now we can narrow even more by using Search for More, where you can get at those novels using the letters and things like that. So lots of ways you can keep narrowing and expanding books that uh, your patron has liked and wanted to read, or for you to become more familiar uh, with that particular genre of books. On the right hand side, you'll see that we have some other tools that we can use. One of them is author readalikes. Again, if you've got a patron that's come in with a particular book, we can do our author readalikes by author name, and you'll see they've listed uh, authors here. We can also do it by genre. So we could come in, again, we were looking at the chick lit, or we can scroll down, we can go into science fiction another way to find other books. So I can scroll down through these authors under science fiction, select one of the authors, and what's great about these author read-alikes in using them for reader's advisory is it tells you what they write about, and as you scroll down, you'll see that it indicates the genres, so science fiction, fantasy, and mystery. It talks about the person themselves and some of their titles. And then if you keep scrolling, you'll see that they have the author read-alikes. So if there were certain things you liked about the author or your patron did, they talk about this author having a lot of humor in his books. If you like the zany humor part, they give you some books. They have sense of wonder from the early days of science fiction. They'll give you some book titles. So it's a great way to move from a book somebody loved, an author they loved, to other books that are very similar or pulling the characteristics from that book to find other ones. 
and that's just in the author read or in the author read alikes. You can also go at it like we saw from author. So you could put in a fav favorite author and use that, and that was here on the right under author read alikes. In this database, you can also get information for your book clubs and library programs. There are book discussions, book talks. You'll see book discussion guides listed here on the right. But if you also come up very top in the orange bar under more, you'll see there's also that link to author read-alikes, award books, book discussion guides, book talks, and we can select one of those. Yet another way to get into some information about these. When you come into book talks, there's a drop-down menu that you can do teens, ages 9 to 12 or all, which is really nice if you've got a teen group that you're working with you can come in and look at titles for them. For example, we could use one of them from our uh, Soaring Eagle books, the book Aragon. There's the book, and it gives you just a quick little snippet under the book talk. If you go into the different book discussion guides, they'll also give you questions. Um, so we can take these books and find other things, get book talks and book discussions for our libraries. In Novelist, you can also put things in folders like we saw in Books and Authors. I can come up here to my folders or I can sign in. If I sign in, again, you probably could use the same one for your Books and Authors as you do for this one. And this is another way to keep track of books that you're looking at. So let's look at that Hector and the Search for Happiness again like we did in Books and Authors, just to see how things look different in the two resources. There's my book, there's my information, and I can now put this in my folder. I can print, email, save, or put items in a folder. And I can also, if I've already set up folders like we did in Books and Author, I can plunk it in right from here. If I haven't created a folder for that topic, I can just put it in my folder and hopefully this will come back. Notice that on the right now, under my folder has items, there's Hector and the Search for Happiness, and some other things that I have not placed in folders. If I wanted to manage these folders, I can go to Folder View here on the right, or up here at the very top, notice that I have items in my folder, and I can click on that. So like we saw in Books and Authors, I can create various folders here. So if I've got a list of books and I haven't dealt with them, I can create folders, do a new folder here, or add items to it. So for example, I have one for Flat Stanley here, and notice I put several books in my list about Flat Stanley. I click on those, come up here, I want to move those to the Flat Stanley folder. And now they'll go off my list, and they'll be over here in Flat Stanley. So you can manage your reading list that way, especially if you're doing book discussions in your library. Uh, you have various uh, books that you want to file away for different talks or displays, or to show your patrons a way to manage the different kind of books that they're reading. If we go back out here, then we can do searches. We're still, as you'll notice, logged in, and I can keep adding items to that. So let's cut to the chase about Reader's Advisory Training. On the right-hand side, there's a Reader's Advisory Toolbox. Here you'll find a lot of helpful information to train yourself, your staff, and just basically get yourself up to speed. The first one here under Browse Reader's Advisory Content in the Toolbox is called Learn About Genres. This, like I said, is a great way to get up to speed. You'll notice that they have older dates, these articles. However, it's a great place to start. So if you're not familiar with fantasy fiction, here's Getting Up to Speed in Fantasy. You'll see that it tells what fantasy is, here's what happens in fantasy, why people like fantasy, and some key titles. And again, because this was written in 2008, it still lets you have a launching point to key titles, key authors, how to talk to fantasy fans. But we could take one of these titles, so The Mists of Avalon, and just like we've done before, to find some newer books perhaps, we just use the search for more on the right hand side. Go back out here and we go back into our Reader's Advisory Toolbox. 
The next one over here is Test Your Genre IQ. This is a um, where staff can survey their own adult fiction reading experience, find the gaps, and it's prepared by the Adult Reading Roundtable. And you'll see that it talks about what this is about. If I keep scrolling down here on the right, it tells you all the different genres that I can get up to speed with and where it is. Once we click on, you'll scroll down here, click here to download the PDF for this document. And then I can scroll through and work through this survey and get up to speed on various genres. So just another great training tool to use. Coming back out to our Reader's Advisory Toolbox, I'm going to skip the training one for a second and we'll come over here to Reader's Advisory Best Practices. If we click on that, again we're going to get a list so we have things from selling books to teenagers, display, why RA is important, reader's advisory with graphic novels, and again we click on that. They have brought together information about these topics for folks to help get up to speed, training staff, uh, and training themselves. So let's go back to now this big training one here, reader's advisory training. This is created by Novelist, and it's a course with all of these units, appeal factors, writing annotations, the reader's advisory con conversation, all things that you're talking about here in this Get on the Bus program. For example, if we select the appeal factors, we'll come in here, and here's the beginning of our exercises and information. We scroll down, here's key points, elements of appeal factors, and the appeal factors they use here in Novelist. There's review of each one of those, and let me just scroll down here. And you'll see when you get down towards the bottom that there are exercises in each one of these different areas under appeals. So here's a great way to work through with staff, and notice that you can print email or save this, and again, you could put it in your folder. So I'm going to go back up to the top here. And let's go back out to our Reader's Advisory Toolbox and look at some other things available to you. There is a Reader's Advisory Newsletter that you can either access here on the Reader's Advisory Toolbox or you can subscribe to the newsletter and have it come into your information. This month uh, he's dealing with the question that I dread most in Reader's Advisory and he deals with that. You'll also see that there's some other, other information here, working with youth, the appeal factors exercise that we just saw, and some features and podcasts. So this month they're doing a podcast on Gothic fiction. That link is here in the newsletter, but you'll also find that it's here on the right-hand side in the reader, Reader's Advisory Toolkit. There's also display ideas for various age levels, so if you're taking this one step and kind of uh, making displays here to encourage different books or different genres to folks. There's some suggestions for you. Also under the Novelist resources here are the Novelist Notes is another newsletter in addition to the Reader's Advisory Newsletter, book display and marketing ideas, but there's also one if you're using Reader's Advisory with students. They've added here, there's book talks and book discussion guides, there's also an addition of book, picture book extenders. So if that's another area you're trying to get more familiar with, you can come into picture book extenders, and you'll see it's an alphabetic list of titles, or I can switch to authors. And again, since it's Take Your Kid to Work Day, let's go to Adventure Annie Goes to Work. And here's the picture book extender. What it gives you is a summary, discussion questions, activities, and so that you can help them find other titles, it gives related titles. And that was under the picture book extenders under the tools for schools and teaching with books. The other piece here, if there's another category that you're trying to get up to speed on, so for example history for grades 9 to 12, it gives you lists of books. So life during wartime stories from Iraq and Afghanistan, civil war fiction, nobles and royals, again keeping with the wedding theme, this lets you get to yet other lists of books to guide patrons to. If you scroll down to the very bottom of any of the EBSCO 
pages, there's a link to EBSCO support site. Going into that, here at the top under training, scroll down to tutorials. And again, if we scroll down, you'll see that there are all these novelist tutorials, including finding books based on appeal factors, finding recommendations, teaching with books, and using novelists K through eight. So if you're working more with the younger set, again, find books based on appeal in Novelist K-8. So a great resource, a lot of material in Novelist and books and authors for you to increase your reader's advisory skills, working with staff, working with patrons, and getting yourself up to speed. So I'm going to go back out here. We'll just put it on the Go Wild databases page. And since we already briefly kind of in the middle talked a little bit about um, the Gale Academic, let's see if we can get into LISTA real quick and then we'll take some questions. The Library Information Science and Technology Abstracts is another way, as we saw with the Gale Academic 1 file, of getting some background and article information. So we could do a search on, again, Reader's Advisory. and get some background material. And let's scroll down here, bringing Reader's Advisory into your reference area. Here we talk again about Manja, if you're trying to get up to speed about Manja. Scroll down, a lot of information here on Reader's Advisory. Notice that most of them are in full text. If they're not in full text, remember that you can always look for um, the link to check it in some of our other databases. So, for example, the Reader's Advisory Handbook in Idaho Librarian. Notice that we don't see any information about HTML or PDF. There's no full text here. But if you look on the left-hand side, check full text availability in e-journals, remember that we own so many resources, and it's guiding us to Wilson Omnifile Full Text. And you'll see that we can come in, find our issue, and that happened to be volume 60, number 2. You do often have to remember that little tidbit of information. Now we'll bring me into Wilson Omnifile, the one that had that, and we can look for that Reader's Advisory Handbook. And there it is in full text. So if you don't see it in the database you're searching for, always remember to check for full text. Uh, in some other source that we might own. So now let's go back here and we'll take some questions. If anyone has questions, be sure and raise your hand so that I can unmute you or put it in the, tech, in the question field and I see we've got some here. Okay, are the books listed in the series also, list, also always listed in order of the series? In Novelist, you can bring that series up, and when you put it in a certain view, it will put it in order and number them. So it's really nice there in Novelist. Um, yes, all the books that are in Novelist K-8, you can search in regular Novelist. What going to Novelist K-8 buys you is just it takes out the adult level books. So I'm going to scroll here and see if anybody's got their hand up. In books and authors, I, I, I think the answer to that is sometimes. I found in books and authors that um, it's not always in order, but when you get that list printed out, the date is usually there. So if no one has any other questions, uh, we can wrap up today. Uh, any reminders from... Uh, no, I think that's all. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, we, for the purposes of the video archive, we will uh, take out that chunk where we're having technical difficulties. But um, just remember to visit getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com. And if there, are, if I have any other announcements regarding the May sessions, I will send that out in an email. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.